Hello everyone. Like many of you, I'm finding that I've got perhaps some more time to be thinking a little bit more deeply about some of the things that happened to me in the weeks and days at the moment. And earlier in this week, I read the story, The Tiger Who Came to Tea, to our toddler group in an online group so that they could hear a story even though we couldn't meet together. And since then, I've been thinking a lot about the themes in the story and I thought I'd share them with you today. I thought first how pertinent the story feels for these times when I looked at the picture towards the end of Sophie and her mummy returning from the shop, all stocked up with lots more nice things to eat. But the more I thought about it, the more I realised that there are a lot of themes contained in the story that are good for us to reflect on. One of those is just how much times have changed, or not, as the case may be. Sophie and her mum and dad find themselves with a completely empty larder, too late in the day to go to the shops and get some more. Back in the day before 24-hour opening, they simply had to wait for the next morning. It's a timely reminder for us of just how much we have got used to going shopping exactly how and when we like. In this week, when the supermarkets have had to restrict their opening hours, for safety and to simply get food back on the shelves. I know I, for one, have got used to just popping to the shops at any given moment. So much so that I don't actually, as a rule, keep much in at all. It's not something my gran would have recommended. And perhaps it's part of the reason that people rushed out and panic bought so much to start with. That fear of not being able to get because they hadn't already got it in. And that sense of being prepared is really important to us. Be prepared was once a watchword and indeed is in still the motto of the scouting movement. But many of us were caught off guard by the recent events. Nothing had prepared Sophie and her mummy for the events of the story either. But having got through the crisis of the day, they went and bought a big tin of tiger food in case the tiger should ever come to tea again. He never did but they were still better prepared. Each and every one of us will be learning things about ourselves and about our lifestyles in these difficult times, which we will hopefully have as new skills to go forwards to the future, to prepare us for when we face difficulties again. Although, like the tiger who never came back, we hope that things like this won't either. For me, this highlights the need to take precautions and safeguard ourselves in the good times and the bad times, no matter how good we want to be towards others. We must take care of ourselves as well if we're going to be able to help anyone at all. I'm reminded very much of those safety videos on airlines that show you how you need to put your own oxygen mask on before you turn and help the person next to you. So do be kind to yourselves. Make sure you look after yourself too. It's okay to do that. And especially important to remember for so many of us who are living at much closer quarters with our families than we're used to. But it is really important to balance that need for self-care with the generosity towards others. The tiger who came to tea is a fabulous example of abundant hospitality. It's quite in keeping with our Christian faith. That tradition of welcoming the stranger runs strongly through both the Old and the New Testaments. I'm also reminded of Jesus saying, Whenever you did it for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. At a time when so many people are self-isolating due to illness, or staying at home entirely because of their vulnerability, or struggling financially because of not getting paid, or even losing their job, it falls to others to generously share both their food and their time and their talents to ensure that everyone is taken care of. It turns out that it doesn't just take a village to raise a child, but it actually takes an entire community to care for everyone. Even in our necessary and enforced separation, we are continually being drawn into community together. The words of Genesis still ring true today. It is not good for man to be alone. But we can't ignore the tiger in the room any longer. 
Judith Kerr was born to a Jewish background in Germany in 1923. And when she was 10 years old, they fled Germany as the Nazis came to power, fleeing first to Switzerland and then to France, before finally settling in Britain in 1936. Although Kerr always said that the tiger was just a tiger and didn't mean anything more, it's not hard to wonder just what an unexpected knock on the door might have felt like to Judith and her own mother. We've long told children about stranger danger, and it's true. Every single stranger poses a potential threat, but they are also a potential friend or someone in whom we might meet Christ himself. It's hard to reach out. It's hard to reach out towards people we don't know. It's filled with uncertainty, but it is something that, if done with caution and with all the proper preparations and self-preservation we've talked about, it can be filled with great rewards for both of us. I think it's important to remember that God comes to us as stranger, as other, and any encounter with God can be quite unsettling indeed, as we are confronted with the creator of all things and often with our own shortcomings. And when we think about those who we do invite in, as a church, we are so often disappointed when those that we've welcomed don't stay. But this story has a lesson for us here as well. Some people, like Sophie, are ours to take care of forever. But others, like the tiger, will come in and out of our lives only fleetingly. I wonder what happened to that tiger after he left Sophie's house. And I wonder just what prompted him to knock on Sophie's door on that particular day. Sometimes we will never know, and we just have to hand that over to God. And lastly, I was struck by how different the thoughts of Sophie and her mother probably were when confronted with the giant tiger at the door. The reactions and thoughts and feelings of most of us are likely very different from many of those around us. And that's okay. We all come to this with different experiences and backgrounds that will be informing our worries and our concerns and our fears. But I am struck most by the playful excitement shown by Sophie in the story. In spite of her mother's very reasonable, probable concerns and fears, it turns out to be a day that Sophie not only enjoys, but one that she won't forget in a hurry. And that's something that those of us who are parents of children being kept home from school at the moment ought to really hold on to. Or in fact, each and every one of us. Because there is fear in uncertainty, but there can also be awe and wonder and adventure and joy. Take care. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.